this world, all who come to this world come for death and sorrow. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of coming. Mm -hmm. You can call it whatever you want, incarnation or or arriving in a hologram or holding on to a hologram, but it's all who come, come for one purpose, and that's death and sorrow. And their joys are so fleeting that they cannot be possessed, nor even grasped. Nor even grasped. You might think of fingers just trying to get a wisp of joy. Mm -hmm. And joy eludes the mind that believes it's in this world. You know, all these compromised ideas. As long as you're still here, you're not enlightened, and so forth. So Jesus says in his manual for teacher, he says that the one, there is one teacher needed to save the world, and that one is not a body or in a body. Mm -hmm. He makes it very clear, the distinction of who is the savior of the world. That's why when people say, my personal, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ is my personal savior, that doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it because the Christ is not a body or in a body. It's a symbol that's being used. And Krishna was saying today how grateful she is for the symbol because it's like the Holy Spirit doesn't take a form. The Holy Spirit is, is literally like we can't see the wind. The Holy Spirit is really unmanifest. And Jesus seemed to be, of all the cosmic images, he seemed to be an image that was a reflection of of the Holy Spirit. Even though the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, you cannot, the Word of God was made flesh. Strictly speaking, Jesus says in the Course, this is impossible. Because the Word is Spirit. And the Word can never be made flesh. And Mary Baker Reddy, you might have heard of her too, you have no mind and matter, there's no life, truth, substance, intelligence. So, I think what a, what a glorious opportunity we have today to go beyond the tiny instant to the experience of joy to again, you know, look at anything that seems to be an obstacle to the awareness of love's presence or an attachment or something in form that seems valuable because any of those things mean the same thing. Anything that's valued in and of itself in this world, even that fly that's going around, has been going around for the last two days, <laughs> He's joining us. Anything that is seen in and of itself or valued in and of itself is by definition an idol made to take the place of the, the living Christ. And so that's what our joy is, living the experience of being free of, of attachments, free of ambitions, free of pursuits, free of reciprocity, free of exchange. Free of, I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back. Free of bargains. Free of everything that would limit the mind to believe that it's in time and space. And soar into an experience of pure joy which is, which is transcendent, which is mystical. And which is our whole purpose. To, to see and experience ourselves as beyond this world. So with all the metaphors, I like that song, that's a good kickoff song, only an instant does this world endure. Not something we generally heard at the kitchen table when we were growing up from mom and dad. Only an instant does this world endure. It was always about the future or the past. It was always deflecting away from the holy instant. All of our conditioning, everything we were raised with, the whole thing, we bought it hook, line and sinker. A, a, a complete illusion that has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. And then we have to go into the Holy Instant. We have to have an experience of the Holy Instant to know that the separation never happened. <coughs> to, it's just one instant, but it's like, what's it going to be? Holy? Holiness? Or sin and death? Which face? Of the, of the moment are we going to accept. It's not two moments, really. They, are, they aren't even side by side, because the Holy Spirit answered the belief in separation simultaneously as the belief arose. So it wasn't, it was, it was that fast that we have to decide which of those two interpretations we value more. 
innocence or guilt. And it's one instant. So, I, the section from the Course that's coming to mind is the immediacy of salvation. Where Jesus is saying, why would the good, he has a question, he has a direct question to the mind. Why should the good appear in evil's form? Why should the good appear in evil's form? We watched this movie, God's Not Dead, and there's a black man from South, South Africa who's always saying, God is good. And always, God is... All the time. Hmm? All the time. Always. God is good. God is good. If we come into a non-dualistic, goodness being love. God is love. All the time. God is love. God is love. God is love. Why should the love appear in evil's form? Why should the good appear in evil's form? This is from the immediacy of salvation section, late in the text of the Course. Why should it take time to experience what you already are? Why should the good appear in evil's form? Why are there perceived difficulties around health, or around finances, or around the world, or around relationships, or around anything? Why should the good appear in evil's form? And then he follows up his question with another question. And is it not deception if it does? It's so deep. He's just saying, why should the good appear in evil's form? And is it not deception if it does? No wonder he has less than 135. A healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. No wonder he put the I need do nothing section in the book. A much misinterpreted <laughs> uh, piece in the book because it's interpreted from the ego lens of doing as if the doer is a fact. And now this doer need do nothing. This doer need only be. Well, this doer is, is a denial. What did Shakespeare teach us? To be or not to be, that is the question. And I was saying that only an hour ago. And there was questions of whether it would be a wedding today or not. I said, to be or not to be, that is the only question. This isn't a question of a wedding or no wedding. We have not come here to discuss such silly matters. We have not come for ceremonies. We have not come to play with little ideas, children's toys, and tinker around. It's to be Shakespeare's question, to be or not to be, is the question. And then Jesus is saying, why should the good appear in evil's form? He's, he's sending us toward the be. He's, he's not going to be content with the not to be. And, and who could, let's see, lesson 139, I will accept atonement for myself. In the Course, the workbook lesson, he says, you are yourself. Of that there is no doubt, and yet you doubt it. Mm -hmm. The only thing in the universe, the only thing in the universe that you cannot doubt is your identity, is who you are. That's the absolute only thing in the universe that's, that's beyond doubt, and yet you doubt it. Self-doubt is fear. Self-doubt is guilt. To deny who you are is the only thing. That's how the song ends. We would go beyond this instant to eternity, to identity, 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 eternity, eternity, eternity. You know, it's an intense song because it's like eternity sending out a plea to say, remember me, remember me. That's all in the Lion King, that's what Simba's father says from the clouds. Remember, remember, we have an identity. Don't get caught in the pride land, don't get caught in a kuna matala, eating bugs. You know, it's not, it's, you may think it's a good life. You're not working when you're eating bugs, but still, remember, don't be content with the bugs.